Hey everybody, Mr. Mall here. Uh, welcome to our video on hair analysis. Uh, something you probably didn't think you'd be doing in this class, but it becomes a pretty big issue. Um, so what we'll be doing through this is looking at pieces of hair found at the crime scene and trying to see if it connects to one of the suspects or the victims. Um, trying to put someone at the scene of the crime because if we can match your hair to the scene of the crime then we know you've been there and that's a big part you have to put somebody at the crime scene if you can't do that they're not going to jail okay um just kind of a side note here um in 2000 i think 18 the fbi released a huge study showing that a lot of their hair analysis they did was not very accurate and unfortunately some people were put away for quite a long time based on inaccurate hair analysis um so we have computers do it a lot now uh, but hair analysis is a very big debate in the forensics world right now about whether it's actually scientific or not. What I mean by that is, can two different people have the same kind of hair structure? Um, and a lot of people are arguing, and what we have found in the past is that two people can have hair that's indistinguishable by the human eye. Is that if you put them both under the microscope, they can look exactly the same, but come from two different people. It's rare, but it happens. Happens enough that wrong people have been put away, unfortunately. That's my side note. We are going to do this one. We're going to go through it. That's not the case from Murder at Old Fields. This one's pretty cut and dry. So I'm going to go to lab, and I'm going to go to hair, okay? Similar to if you've already done fingerprinting, if you have it, this is kind of advice that I have for everybody when you do these, these ones that have a lot of information, is have the classroom page open as well as you go through it. So the top of my screen looks a little different, but if I press and hold on the classroom I get the option of opening in a new window I'm gonna do that okay so now um, I can open up the lesson for hair analysis okay and I can have this open as I go because as I'm let's see I'm gonna close this a little bit so I'm gonna select my first person I'm gonna not choose Alex or Rebecca Smith because both their hairs are gray so it doesn't really show much I'm going to choose Henry because he's got different color than gray. You can see it's brown. Um, but when I zoom into his hair, I have to look at the cuticle and see what type of scale pattern they have. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to go back to my lesson here. I'm going to look. Okay, so here are the three different types of scale patterns, coronal, spinuous, and imbricate. So if you read through the lesson, pretty much coronal looks like a crown. Okay, so this one here looks like a crown going across. Spinuous looks like a spine or like a spear. Okay, and then imbricate, I call it just random. It's got these little, they're not squares, but the, it kind of looks like there's a separating line right down the middle. And then there's little chunks on each side, if you get what I'm saying. Um, so now I have to figure out what type of cuticle does Henry have. Oops, so I'm going to close this up quite a bit. I'm going to zoom into Henry's. I'm actually going to get rid of the classroom. Oh, I'm low battery too. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in really close on Henry's. Okay, so the cuticle are all these crazy lines going across. So I have to identify, let's see, or sorry, cuticle. Yeah, the scale cuticle is the bottom one. So does it look like a crown? Does it look like a spear? Or does it look like the imbricate kind of craziness? Well, to me, that looks like the craziness. So I'm going to click on imbricate, one of my favorite words. Okay, so now some of these other ones, straight or curly. Well, if we zoom out, that's a pretty straight piece of hair. Straight, color, brown. Okay, so now medulla pattern and medulla structure. That's where we have to zoom back in and look at this middle piece, so I'm going to drag my little pointer here, right above that arrow, that little highway going down the middle of the hair, that's the medulla. So you have to figure out what type of pattern and structure does it have. Um, it can get a little tricky trying to figure out the difference between uh, intermittent and fragmented and things like that. And once again, I would have the classroom page open as well so you 
you know these terms and you're looking at um, and you have to go through and identify each of these for the pieces of hair found at the crime scene and just a heads up we do have a piece of dog hair so just a heads up with that one so then if I have a piece of evidence hair found on the front porch this is a curly piece of hair clearly on the right hand side so this one here um, I have to go through and select all the information again um, but then at the end I have to select who I think the piece of hair belongs to okay so maybe I think this one bring, belongs to Francis Curran okay so once I do my little connection here now this is where the lab can get weird you can get all of the selections like here incorrect but if you match it you can get that part so that's where it gets a little crazy is that like I can clearly tell these two at the top are not the same so I can tell that this hair hair s hair strand on front room of floor I'm getting that information right here I can tell that's not from the dog but I can also go through Francis Kern well Francis Kern's got black hair this is brown so no Marianne Abbott okay that could be it so right now I'm gonna select Marianne Abbott and I'm gonna hold that one because right now that's the best choice Anton nope Henry nope Rebecca nope same structure but gray Alex nope so I can tell hair s probably belongs to Marianne Abbott so if you're watching this congrats you just got one done but you still have to figure out all this other information what color is it what's the medulla pattern what's the medulla structure okay so good luck um, this one can be a little tricky especially with the medulla structure and pattern make sure you read through the classroom page that will give you a lot of help all right. So good luck. Let me know if there are any issues.